Welcome everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video today. We're going to be taking a look at this business, Micron. Now I did do a video about this quite a while ago, but since then it actually slipped even further. Quite remarkable if you think about it, you know, this business is considered by many a gem in the stock market right now. And for good reasons, today I want to be going over these reasons. As we can see, the stock is down 45% this year alone. Really quite remarkable because the business fundamentals are actually doing quite quite nicely you know little spoiler alert here so i'll be taking you through the fundamentals the latest earnings what is going on with this business obviously super important because it is a very cyclical business okay so we have to better in mind as we can see it has had you know an incredibly rocky past obviously right now the business is so different because they are in this established or stabilized also i can say industry right now which they have not been in for a, a very long time that is also why the price is uh, at this point, you know, well, c kind of high, right, compared to the past. And that is also why the stock price is so rocky. Today, we're going to be talking about this business. Is it great value or is it not? Now, first things first, let's go over the important things. Okay, so I want to take a look here at the financial results. If we can see uh, Q3 2023, obviously, this has to do with uh, actually book years and stuff like that. Okay, of course, we are just right now in Q3 officially, but uh, they report the, the FQ3 right here, as we can see. Now, we want to take a look at the information they give here. Once again, it's particularly important for Micron uh, because it is such a cyclical business. Now, this is the the the, the CEO, Sanjay, a great guy, a, quite a passionate guy too, has been on this business since 2017. Since then, has done incredibly well. Really, I'm looking at the numbers on my other screen right here. 2016, 2.6 a billion cash outflow, so no free cash flow at all. Basically, not a very good year. Uh, and then when he came to power, and obviously this also has to do with cyclicality, so we cannot give him all the praise. But since then, you know, basically revenue went from uh, you know, about 12 billion to about 32 billion. So, really, quite some growth there uh, during his reign. Uh, so, so very interesting, very interesting, very passionate guy. That is always nice to see. Now, as we can see, actually, we can start with the highlights here. As we can see, they they say this quarter delivered record quarterly revenue with strong profitability and free cash flow. Now, this is quite important. We'll get back to this, but hold this thought: free cash flow, three cash flow, three cash flow. Okay, and then they give some details on uh, the products that they are in. Okay, so they obviously are in the memory business, so they create uh, basically especially a lot of DRAM, as we can see. They also have some other products. Uh, but for you, I'll leave that up uh, to you for now. I have made another video in the past about that product uh, too. So if you're interested in that, please check that out. Right now, I really want to zoom in on what is going on with this business right now. What are some of the things you want to take a look at? But obviously, if you're interested in the DRAM industry or in the NAND D technology, uh, please take a moment to pause uh, and read it. Now, as we can see, uh, you know, just some general information here on the slide. Overall, of course, they are saying uh, we are doing quite well. Of course, they are impacted by the COVID-19 control and the supply chain issues in China. Who isn't, right? So as we could see here, supply chain uh, and also control measures. Now, for, for actually for Micron, this is even more important um, because a lot of the, you know, the resources for chips and chips itself, you know, microchips and stuff like that come from China, of course. So that is something that really uh, must be taking into account here. But for, you know, for the time being, still, this business is performing quite well and hasn't really suffered all that much. Probably the quarter would have been better if there were no supply chain issues. But hey. That is just how it is. Now, let's go to the interesting stuff straight away. So as we can see here, the outlook, what precisely is going on? Mind you, the memory business is a rather volatile one. Okay, you really have a lot of cycles. Obviously, we've seen it in the chip industry with other producers too. But this is something to really bear in mind, okay? It is not uncommon for Micron to see huge revenue drops, okay? I'm reading from the other screen again. 2019, 23% decline. In 2020, another 10% decline, basically. Okay, and they are expected actually to next year see a decline of about 14% too, based on analyst expectations, okay? And then the year after that, they are expected to grow 22% again, okay? Obviously, these are forward-looking statements, 
But what I do want to point out here is that this business is just incredibly volatile, and that is something you have to take into consideration. As we can see, the expectations here are demand growth, okay, but moderation. Right, so that is important. We still have growth, but moderation. So basically, they say, okay, the cycle is kind of coming to an end. Uh, and as we can see, significant reduction in a near term industry bit demand, primarily uh, attributable to the end demand weakness in consumer markets, including PC and smartphone. Certainly something that is very, very true. You see it with, for example, Intel, you see it with Best Buy, everyone is struggling with the fact that people are not buying as many PCs, as many laptops, as many smartphones. Simply has to do with the overall economic conditions. If you do not feel very comfortable by your financial position, you are not too keen on buying a laptop for, let's say, 1K or something of a sort, right? So that is why, you know, you see usually when the economy is cooling off, people cut back on these expenses. And obviously, that is something that Micron suffers from. Now, as we can see, they still do see growth here. Um, but as we can see, you know, it is basically moderating here. Still mid to high teens, though, for DRAM and high 20 percentage uh, points for Nandi. So certainly not bad at all. Long term DRAM Nandi bit demand uh, will remain unchanged, the Kagas. Okay, so basically uh, what they expect is still long term growth. That is basically what they say here. Now, as we could say, they are reducing supply growth trajectory. This is super important. One of the, the, the risks of a business like this is having too much in your inventory why because this industry is changing so rapidly right the chips that are good today in two years are not that great anymore think about your smartphone right think about what smartphone you were using let's say seven or eight years ago i mean they were so bad right i mean you cannot go back to the smartphone you had probably eight years ago Eight years, okay, is of course still long for inventory, but what I'm trying to say here is that over time, chips and smartphones for that matter really become better and better and better quite quickly. And so it could certainly happen that you have to depreciate a lot in your inventory if you have to take, uh, you know, these, these, basically these products if they sit along for a long time in your inventory. So one of the key elements here that Micron really has focused on over the years is to be able to have this dynamic supply chain. Hey, we see that this cycle is coming to an end. We cut down production straight away. That is super important. Otherwise, your costs are going to remain high and the revenue is going to implode. And guess what? Once you come out of this, you know, the down cycle, basically, all your chips are basically worthless. All your memory is just basically outdated, right? So super important and good to see that they are acting on it for sure. As we can see, as we can see they are focusing on reduced levels of supply growth here. So that is certainly great. And they're using their inventory to supply the market. So that is certainly great. This is, you know, a perfectly uh, legit business plan. I would say this is really, really smart. So that is basically it. Now let's just go into the financials. As we can see, actually, they had quite a strong quarter here, about 9 billion. Okay, so revenue is up about 11% quarter over quarter, 16% year over year. So certainly not bad, especially given the fact that they are going towards the end of this cycle. Okay, so as we could see, DRAM still uh, the, the basically the biggest, you know, biggest form of revenue here. Nandi is growing a little bit quicker, uh, but still is like only one fourth of the total. Now, as we can see on the whole, Overall, you know, in terms of business units, great performance overall, only mobile declined a little bit. Once again, can really be attributed to the overall economic decline. So on the whole, you know, nothing to really worry about here. Everything still seems quite strong. As we can see, operating results here, decent margins, operating expenses, about $3 billion, okay, uh, in net income. So that will be EPS of about $2.6 per share. Is that bad? Not at all, right? Think about it. If you do this times four, you will make about 10 bucks a year. Micron's price right now is 55. Okay, let that sink in for a little while. I mean, it is really not a lot, but it is income. Better than mind, okay? The free cash flow, we'll get back to that in a second. Actually, right now we will. Okay, so as we can see, the free cash flow is much, much lower. 
okay that is super important to bear in mind uh, actually this this quarter was still nice as we could see they had about 3 billion in that income about 1.3 in free cash flow uh, still decent right if you do this times four we would get about 6 billion cash flow a year once again uh, you know the market cap is not that high for micron uh, so that would certainly still be a decent result so I just uh, looked it up for you just to make sure, right? So the, the the total market cap right now is basically 60 billion. They actually have 10 billion left on the balance sheet in cash. Okay, so you basically pay 50 for it. 6 billion in free cash flow certainly is not bad. Okay, I'm not quite sure if they will be able to pull this off, by the way, because expectations for this year are really much lower than that. Okay, so I'm not saying they will pay this off. Obviously, they still have a couple of quarters to go here. Uh, and so, you know, the cycle is coming to an end. So we don't quite know if they're going to make that. But obviously, this was a good quarter. As we can see, huge buybacks on the way here, which is certainly not bad, and a, a dividend that they just started paying out that is actually growing quite rapidly. Uh, so certainly not bad. You know, a lot of the value is coming back to you, which is highly appealing about this business. But bear in mind, okay, uh, you know, the earnings look especially very, very appealing, but actually the free cash flow is much lower. Now, I would not be as optimistic to say, hey, this free cash flow eventually, you know, that's going to catch up with it, net income. No problem. I wouldn't be that confident. Uh, that is something what a lot of people tend to say. Oh, no worries. Right now, we need to invest. Right now, the cap X, right, is so high. But no worries. In the future, we will profit from that. And, you know, this this gap between earnings and free cash flow will, uh, will narrow. I would say... I'm not too sure about that. Why? They are simply in an industry that really requires a lot of capex. That is just the reality of the matter. I'm not saying they cannot narrow that gap. They probably can to a certain extent. But don't be, you know, fooled. Okay. Don't just think, hey, you know, the earnings are so great. Let's just buy this business. They are investing a lot in capex, and that is really something to bear in mind because I do believe that this business will have high capex going forward. It simply needs to invest a lot to stay relevant. That is simply the truth of the matter. Nonetheless, free cash flow still looks kind of appealing. As you can see, a lot of liquidity actually, 15 billion actually, so certainly not bad here. Uh, and if you pay off all debt, still 5 billion left. So as we can see, very, very healthy balance sheet here. Now, please let me take your attention to the future, okay? This business right now will go through some trouble. As we can see, revenue is expected to decline next year. Look, it is extremely difficult to, to predict future cash flows for this business, okay? Simply because you have these cycles and you kind of have to see through that. But what I would suggest you to do is always take into consideration these, I would say, depressed free cash flows, right? Much lower than the earnings, quite simply because they need to keep investing okay having that said though the cash flows are still very very substantial like i said that the, the net price you pay for this business is 50 billion if you have 50 billion in cash like warren buffett does he literally can buy this business right now and still have you know uh plenty of billions left in the bank right it is not that expensive you know it's only 50 billion for such a powerful business and as we can see here in 2018 they actually did 8.5 billion in free cash flow in that case you will almost make uh you know wow about let's say 15 percent free cash flow yield so in one one year you would recoup 15 percent of your investment basically quite appealing right and so is this business going to grow going forward i do believe that this business will be more powerful let's say five to ten years quite likely given the industry that they are in and also given the dominance that they have in the memory business perhaps even more importantly look at this book value here you literally get a business with about 45 billion in book value okay that means if we liquidate right now this business will be worth a ton. Now, let me just uh, actually change this to quarterly, okay? Because the recent quarterly results will probably have, you know, upped this book value even more uh, because obviously they did the buybacks. So let's see what changed here. Once again, this is important. Why is this important? Because you get a business that is highly cyclical. If you have that protection in book value, that is very, very appealing. So let's take a look here. Uh, as we can see, so basically the book value, yeah, it's about 45, okay? So as we can see over the past quarters, it certainly has increased quite a bit, right? $5 in the past basically year. 
you know, yeah, basically, we could say if they continue like this in one year time, you'll probably basically have your purchase price, right? Right now, you pay about 52 bucks. You know, you would have about 50 bucks in book. But, you know, let's assume, you know, let's just be a little bit uh, easy here with the numbers. Basically, in one year, you would have your entire book purchase price backed up in book value now let's take you know let's just take a, a approach here and see okay let's say they liquidate do you really get that cash is there really a high opportunity that you get back that cash now as we can see here one fifth of the value is basically in cash right then obviously you have the these you know these current assets obviously given the business you know uh, quite important here so that is something to bear in mind you know they need to be able to seal their memory chips and stuff like that that is of obviously quite important in this business if you become irrelevant in the business it might be tough to get rid of this but on the whole you know probably not that big a deal i mean there's still memory memory you know dram and stuff like that is still in very high demand i mean uh, probably you'll be just fine here and then you have a lot of property plant and equipment obviously highly depreciated on these buildings and machines and such so you know kind of seems good to me obviously it is kind of hard to say you know what these these plants are i haven't done uh, you know research in all the the factories and plants that they own but obviously, right now, if I just look at the balance sheet, it doesn't look that bad. There is not particularly high goodwill, right? There is not particularly high intangibles, which might all be a little bit hard to really cash in sometimes. Depends on the situation. Uh, but sometimes it might be hard to cash in. It really seems like they have hard assets to back that book value up. Now, going forward, it's quite hard to come up with a valuation here, but let's just assume the following. Don't take a look at the, the CapEx, by the way. I got rid of it just to adjust the cash flows. Uh, so basically what I assumed is next year, 2023, they're going to do about 3.7. Then they're going to do about 5. This is in line with analyst expectations. Then they're going to struggle a little bit and basically stay around that 4, 5 mark for a while and then do eventually 6. Once again, it is quite hard to, you know, see how much they will really earn. I think what is really appealing about this business is the fact that you get a very strong balance sheet on top of that you get a dividend and buybacks what else could you wish for right one year you might do eight billion one year you might do five billion one year you might do two billion it all depends on the cycle but at the end of the day we kind of want to get an idea with these cash flows what you know what would your return look like and as we can see this is basically the outcomes as you can see if you pay about 50 bucks for the business you'll be set up for decent returns here 10 to 11 percent that is basically it now mind you this is a business with probably right quite a long runway and on top of that really has quite a bit of potential in terms of expanding that business the memory industry is going to expand quite rapidly and you know quite for quite a long time i suppose so on the whole, in this very interesting industry, obviously cyclicality, you have to be able to stomach that. This year also 50% down. Uh, you know, these are serious stock declines, but you get a wonderful balance sheet to back it up. And so the downside, the downside seems very limited here. And that is very appealing. This is a business that really deserves a ton of research, okay? It is really a very interesting opportunity. I'll leave it at that. Please in the comments let me know what you think about this business. I'll be very interested to hear your comments. And then I'll see you in the next one.